Thanks for staying with us now. As we celebrate women globally this month, it is important to shine some light on some of the issues that affect a good number of women, and that is the subject of women's right in marriage. But before we even go further, we want to start from the foundation of the marriage by asking what validates your marriage? How valid is that document that binds you to your spouse? And is, in the event of conflict, how much backing will your marriage certificate give you? That's the question. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WaysHowAfrica1 with the hashtag WaysHow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 On the second half, we're going to open our phone lines, but now we just want to have a conversation. All right, so let me come to Jennifer first, because Lami is our expert in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right, so when you're going into, because in my head, honestly, when I saw this topic, Lamy has been happy on it, especially again with all the, the stories that broke, I think it was two weeks ago about one woman trying to bury the husband and they are now telling her she's not, I mean, somebody you've lived with for 15 yeah. years, you're not his wife and all of that. So I'm just wondering, you know, do we really need, this is me thinking out loud, right? Why? First of all, are we even married in the first place? Is it just because you want to have documents, you want to have properties, or what is it? Because I know, if let me start to open her mouth to talk now, she will tell you it's because of properties that you must validate that document. Because that's the, I mean, that's the only reason I can see in my head that really requires me to have a document. If not, I can live my life without having, you know, to sign any document to say we are legally married. But we yeah. stay together. But what do you think, um, Jennifer? Um. Okay. Oh. Um. Over the past or in, in past times, I know that people, even now, people marry for different reasons. Mm. People marry for wealth. People marry because, uh, people marry for security. Mm -hmm. People marry because, oh, I'm getting old. I think I should have a man mm. or I should get a wife. Uh, people marry for, oh, I need kids. Mm -hmm. People marry for love. People mm. marry because they need companionship. So it depends on you. What's your why? Why are you getting married? What mm. is the reason? So when it comes to um, having a marriage certificate or being legally bound or something like that, to a lot of people, it really doesn't mean anything to them. Mm. Why to some people, it means a lot, especially if um, they come from a family that is broken or they come from a family where the mom or the dad suffered a lot. A lot. So going forward, they're like, okay, you know what? I'm okay. going to do this. We'll do courts. We'll do traditional. We'll do white. We'll do everything. We even <laughs> sign print up. Do you get all those necessary things? So there are people that actually put those things in place. Why are there people that really don't care hmm. about things like that? Hmm. But yeah, sometimes so, tradition plays yeah. a role in some of those issues. That so we see the validity around. of marriage is it a document that validates that you are married, or it is the fact that both of you know that you are married? Well, in a legal in a legal community or a legal system, mm. yes, that document mm -hmm. states it shows that yes, you are married. Mm. Because if you if you want to do something and you're involving another human being, and you say, oh, he's my husband, you have to present a document that states that this person is legally bound to you mm -hmm. because the name that they know is from your father or your mother. Okay. It's your family name, so you're taking someone else's name. Why has your name changed? <laughs> Okay, well, our expert family lawyer. <laughs> Let me do do. <laughs> so, so what is your question? You are always harping on the fact that every woman should go and really look into their documentation when it I comes think, um, ooh, please, can you amplify, amplify your voice? My voice. Okay, can you hear me now, Lami? Yes, I can. Okay, I was saying that you're always harping on the fact that women must go and check that documentation. They need to be sure that they are really, really married. Why? Why are you always doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. First, um, Uwa, we need to understand that the family unit is the bedrock of every society. Mm -hmm. And it, ha it has to be regulated, whichever way it has to be regulated. So I overheard you talking about, sorry, I heard you rather talking with um, Jennifer about the propriety of um, a document. Mm. The document is the evidence of that marriage anyway. So you still have to possess it. And now, let me even start from the beginning so you can understand. Let me put it into proper um, perspective. Context, yeah. There are two types of marriage recognized under the Nigerian the traditional marriage, customary marriage, mm -hmm. and the statutory marriage. There are only two. 
under the statutory marriage, you have the marriage act. You get married under the act. Now you cannot decide where you want to perform that ceremony. Mm. It could be in church or it could be at the marriage registry. So some people, it's erroneous for people to repeat it as a church marriage or court marriage. There's nothing like that. Mm. It's just one marriage which is under the marriage act. And it could be performed in the registry or in the church. Now, the second one is the native law and custom of the bride. The marriage according to the native law and custom of the bride. So if you are a Benin woman, your husband comes to marry, he marries you under the native law and custom of the Benin people. Mm -hmm. And he must ensure that he does all what that is necessary for that marriage to be valid under the Nigerian law. Hmm. And part of what is the, that what's the essentiality of um, customary law, uh, customary marriage is payment of the dowry. First, consent of the parties. Parent, yeah. Payment of the dowry is very, very essential. Then, handing over the bride to the father, sorry, to the groom's family. Hmm. That is very, very significant. Hmm. Then, leading the bride to her husband's house. All those four steps, if they are not present in a customary wedding and customary marriage, then it's not a customary marriage. It's not valid. Huh. Then, on the other hand, the statutory marriage. You can, as I said before, you can choose to perform it in the church or in the registry. If you want to go to the registry, you are very free. But if you want to go to the church, there are other rules. You must ensure that you get married in a licensed place of worship. Mm. So you must ensure that the church that is marrying both of you is licensed by the Ministry of Interior. There are a lot of churches that are um, that operate under expired licenses. Wow. Any married, yes, any married performed by such a church, anybody can, even after 30 years, an outsider, a third party can decide to challenge the validity of your marriage. And it come, if it comes to the fore that at the time you contracted that marriage, that celebration was performed, it was under a failed, I'm sorry, expired license, the marriage is void. It didn't happen under the law. In the so you're supposed to be asking the church if, you know, if, your, if your license is, is uh, updated. It's yes. You are the one who is going to bear the brunt. So I think that it is necessary for you to ensure that you see the license of the church. Hmm. But most of these Orthodox churches are always licensed, most of them. But when you now talk of Pentecostal, all the small, small churches springing up and all that, you have to be on the lookout hmm. to be sure. Mm -hmm. There must be two, the presence of two witnesses aside the officiating ministers. And another issue is the officiating minister must belong to that denomination. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, you are a you are a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, but your parents are Catholics. So you want to ensure that you satisfy your parents. So you go to the Catholic Church to get married. But you now invite your pastor from Redeemed to come and officiate. It is not avoid. Uh -uh. Right? Uh -huh. Yes, I'm telling you, Jilo. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is not avoid. And you must perform the marriage ceremony within the church. You can't take it outside of the church. It must be within the church unless you obtain a special license. That is where you see people go to the beach site to perform, to celebrate their marriage ceremony. They, are, they probably, I want to think that they probably got a special license for that. There are a whole lot of issues that I don't want to go into. Yeah, to bore but you, you know what, let me... All right, so but why I, you know, why I suggested this topic to you was the issue that was on social that was awash on social, social media, media about yeah. two three weeks ago and mm -hmm. i was reading a lot of comments and all that and i said okay i think we need to bring this topic and enlighten it absolutely so do you want me to delve into that yeah, issue? no no hold on first because it's part of enlightenment now because you mentioned something about both parties, especially traditional marriage, where you said they must escort the bride and hand her over. So the people I'm, in my head, because I've seen a lot of people do picture marriages, where they put the picture of the man <laughs> and the picture of the woman. So is that? It's a lie. It's void, though. Oh, <laughs> are you serious? 
It is wait, void. Wait, wait, wait. You have the consent. Except you have the, the only way that of... marriage will have any validity is if they now take a step further to perform the marriage under the act. How do you mean? But if they don't, then, okay, sorry, I, I didn't include the fact that um, Islamic marriage is mm. also under cognitive law and custom. That's the way they grouped it. Mm. So you can also do that. You can perform the nikah. So that's also fine. But mm. all these marriages are very valid. But the only difference is the benefit and the burden. So if you subscribe to native law and custom, to get married under the native law and custom, you mm. must be prepared to bear the burden. Hmm. And one essential feature, one prominent feature of uh, native law and custom, customary marriage is the presence of polygamy. Hmm. The man can take as many wives as he chooses. Then it also affects succession, <laughs> succession rights. When such a man, if such a man dies without a valid will, then his property would devolve on his beneficiaries under the native land custom of that person. Yeah, I mean, all this of, of is his, his all this. If I have my money, <laughs> like I don't need your property. But let me come to Jennifer. But wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let me ask so you. So if you're married, <laughs> if you're married under the Yoruba customary marriage and all native land custom, if the man should pass away without a valid will, then his property would default on his children because native land custom of the Yoruba people does not recognize proper succession rights by marriage. It only recognizes property and succession rights by blood. So it only extends to the children, to the exclusion of the wife. They won't give the wife peke. You see, is this peke? So if you are getting married, you see, is this peke matter? You see, let me tell you something, Lami. Let us be honest with ourselves. We are not here to come and be speaking grammar. Why exactly do I need a valid, uh, what's it called, document when it comes to marriage? Is it not boiling down to property? Is that all marriage is supposed to be all about? But let me come to Jennifer. She wanted to say something. We'll come back. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, Uwa, hold on. Let me tell you something before mm -hmm. you go on to Jennifer. You can't just say, can I just get married and not? When you're going into a marriage, don't forget that in most cases, the, ch the family, that marriage will produce children. Mm -hmm. And it will trigger legal rights. Yeah. It should trigger economic rights. It should trigger issues like cost of it. It trigger issues like properties, property settlement and all that. In a case, the marriage uh, goes south. So you can't just say, I just want to wake up. Why can't I just do what I like? Don't forget that you are bringing people into third parties who never knew when it went into it. You are bringing them into, in, into the equation. So the law has to protect them. Hmm. So property and all that has to be involved. Because whether you like it or not, spouses will acquire property during the life of the marriage. Hmm. So it's very important. So you cannot wish it away. <laughs> Jennifer. Lamia shocked me this night. <laughs> what did she say? What said? <clears throat> now what about um, couples that are probably wearing presents on the day of the marriage, but they just put their picture? I mean, there is already consent from both parties. There is consent from both parents. parents. And I know that when you're doing traditional marriage, it is solely or mostly um, based on the consent of both the, the girl's family and the guy's family coming together to agree that, yes, we are blessing this union. So if you're saying that um, because they were absent and their family were present on their behalf, that their marriage is null and void... Please, I need okay, let me let me give you an instance. Yes. There was a particular case that was decided by a court in Nigeria, right? It's an old case. And in that matter, in that case, the man told his father to please go to his that at that time his prospective bride to ask for her hand in marriage and pay her dowry, which the man did, which the friend, the groom's father did. So the man now went on a journey and he went outside of Lagos. Then found another pretty woman that he felt he should marry. So he took that lady to the registry to get married to the registry. I'm sorry, to her under the statute, uh, under the marriage act. So his father placed the caveat on that marriage that the marriage could not hold because he was already married under the native land custom of the, um, the first wife. And they took the matter to court. And the court found 
for the for the man for for the groom for the groom who took another man and uh, sorry who took another woman and what the court said was yes there was evidence of payment of bride price which is very crucial but that is not the only um only issue that uh, when it comes to validity of customary marriage the other was the wife led to her father's house no they said that night the lady i'm sorry to her husband's house they said that night on evidence it showed that she slept over in her father's house <laughs> and the court said it was an introduction it was not a was not a valid marriage so the other statutory marriage was valid ah love so, me like that. So these things yeah. that happen, me, I think, it, I was thinking it's just tradition and, you know, you can choose not to do it. And so now you are telling, oh my goodness, okay. We need to take a break. <laughs> then another thing, yeah, another I mean, thing, can I go? Go ahead. Then another thing, if you get married under the marriage act, it has its benefits and it has its burdens. Part of the burden is that you cannot get married to somebody else during the um, during the lifetime of that marriage, there are only two ways you can escape that marriage. It's either by death or by dissolution of that marriage at the high court. Hmm. Uwa, did you hear what I said? Yes. Dissolution of that marriage at the high court. There's nothing like automatic divorce hmm. under Nigeria's jurisdiction, jurisprudence. Wow. I've heard people say, um, maybe if we separate for three or four years, automatically, we are divorced now. Ua, yeah, we, if we, you we, marry uh, under the marriage act, if you marry in a registry or in a church, and you do not go to the high court of any state in Nigeria to dissolve that marriage, okay. even after 70 years of your separation, yeah, you are still married. <laughs> okay. Wait, okay. Yes. We had this conversation You are still time. married to that man, and he's still married to you. Any other marriage during the subsistence of that marriage is not avoid and of no effect. Ah. So that was what happened during that lady's case, that people were saying 25 years. Even if it's 50 years. Ha. Huh. It does not matter. The other woman who was smart enough just stood in the, she just, she was looking around. She knew what she had. She knew she had that certificate and hmm. she knew she could use it when it was necessary. Wow. So what would have happened was the man should have taken the step to divorce the first wife he looked at. You have to divorce first before you take another marriage. Hmm. Because, uh, sorry, before you take another woman. Hmm. And likewise, I've also seen cases where a man, for instance, what, your husband marries you under the Benin um, tradition. Gone. Yeah. Then after a while, he now sees Jennifer and likes Jennifer <laughs> and takes Jennifer to the registry. Hmm. And Jennifer starts flaunting her ring that she's the legal wife. It's a lie. That her marriage is null and void and of no effect. Wow. Once the man is married under the native law and custom with somebody else, you cannot take another woman to the registry. It is null and void. Unless you dissolve that traditional marriage. And do you know there are steps to dissolve traditional marriages? So you repeat the step, return her back to her father's house. You know what, Lami? This got just no, got interesting. You hold must on, hold on. Return the bride price. Yeah. We're if you don't return the bride price, you must go to the customary courts for dissolution of that marriage. Wow. Either of the two. If you don't get either of the two done, you are still married to that person. Wow. Okay, so Lami, you know what? We're going to take a break. No. It means that a lot of us women, and I think even men, don't really understand marriage <laughs> i think that a lot of people that are claiming to be divorced they are not, are divorced. not divorced they are not <laughs> all right let's take a break when we return we're going to continue the conversation it's really interesting we're learning <laughs>